Let's use combinatorics to count visual objects. How many squares or rectangles are there in this 2 by 4 rectangle? One way to approach this question is to literally count every square or rectangle. So there are 8 1 by 1 squares. There are also 6 1 by 2 rectangles. There are 1, 2, 3, 4 uh, 1 by 3. And there are 4 1 by 4 rectangles. Uh, sorry, 2 1 by 4 rectangles. And then we can also count the vertical rectangles. Uh, 2 by 1, well, there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 of these. 2 by 2 squares, there are 3 2 by 2 squares. What about 2 by 3? There are 2 of these. And we also have the huge shebang, all of it together. There is one. It's possible I might have forgotten something in here, but that's okay. So this is one way of counting all the squares or rectangles by counting every casework that exists. Another way, a more efficient way, is by using combinations. So let's say we randomly choose a pair of vertical lines. Let's say we choose this one and this one. Each square or each rectangle is made of a pair of vertical lines with a pair of horizontal lines. So using this pair of vertical lines, how many rectangles or squares can be made? In other words, how many pairs of horizontal lines can be chosen? A pair of horizontal lines would, since it's inside this vertical line, make a square or a rectangle. So we have three horizontal lines, and we want to choose a pair of horizontal lines. Uh, does order matter? Order does not matter. So there are three choose two ways that we can choose a pair of horizontal lines. And any pair of horizontal lines, given that it is between or within a pair of vertical lines, will automatically result in a square or a rectangle. So each pair of vertical lines has three choose two ways that it can be used to form a square or a rectangle. How many of such pairs of vertical lines are there? Well, there are four vertical lines in total. Sorry, five vertical lines in total. And we wish to choose a pair. Order does not matter, since if we choose this one and this one, this one first and then this one, we're still having a pair if we were to choose a second and the first one. There are a total of five choose two pairs of vertical lines, since each pair of vertical lines has three choose two ways of making a rectangle or a square. There are a total of 3 choose 2 times 5 choose 2 ways of squares uh, or rectangles. That's 3 times 10, so there are 30 rectangles in total. Oh yes, and over here if we add this up, it does equal 30. Let's try another question. You live at destination A and you're trying to get to your friend's place. Let's say your friend is called Bob. And each of these uh, squiggly lines represent a road. You're a careful driver, and you respect the laws. <laughs> so how many ways are there to go from your house to your friend's house? Of course, we could try doing this problem by counting every possible way. That would take some time. So let's try using combinations instead. In order to go from A to B, you will need to always go up four times. So let U represents go up. And to go from A to B, you have to go right four times. It doesn't necessarily have to be in this arrangement, but as long as you go up four times, you go to the right four times, you will end up at A and B. And the question is how many ways, how many different configurations are there to go from A to B? In other words, how many ways are there to rearrange U, 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 R, 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 R? This is a lot like permutations. So we have eight factorial ways of placing the letters. Since we have four U's, then we divide by four factorial. And since we have four R's, we also divide by four factorial. So there are a total of eight factorial divided by four factorial divided by four factorial ways. You can go from A to B. A pretty neat thing in this problem is that we can apply Pascal's triangle. How many ways there are to go from A to this intersection? One way to go from A to this intersection is also one way. How many ways are there to go from A to this point? Well, we can go up, right, or we can go right up. So there are two ways. 
how many ways are there to go from A over here? One way. A over here, also one way. A to here, A to here, one way, one way, one way. How many ways are there to go from A to this point? We can go up to right one, up one, right one, up one, or right one, double up two. So there are three ways. How many ways are there to go from A to this intersection? We can go up one, right two, right two, up one, or right two, up one, right two. Also three ways. How many ways are there to go from A point to this point? We can count this, but I bet it would be four. I bet from A to here would be six, and this would be four. And I'm pretty sure this would be five, ten, ten, and five. And we see that along the diagonals, we have Pascal's triangle, which is very cool. Let's try solving our final question. You live at your home and you're trying to get to your workplace. How many ways are there to get to your workplace without passing by X? Um, one way to do this is to count every path, and that would work, but there are faster ways to do this. We're going to try solving this question by using complementary counting. So the total number of ways to go from H to W without X without x is equal to the total number of ways from h to w minus the total number of ways to go from h to x and then to w. So we we'll use complementary counting. What is the total number of ways to go from h to x? Well, let's see. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 7 ups, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5 rights. So the total number of ways to go from h to w, even if we can't pass x, is 12 factorial, because 7 plus 5 is 12, divided by 7 factorial, divided by 5 factorial, minus the total number of ways to go to x and then go to w. How many ways are there to go to x? Well, 1, 2, 1, 2. There are 4 factorial, divided by 2 factorial, divided by 2 factorial. For each way that we're at x, if we're at x, how many ways are there to go from x to w? Well, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, so times 8 factorial divided by 5 factorial divided by 3 factorial. If we're at x, there are a total of 8 factorial divided by 5 factorial divided by 3 factorial to go to w. And since there are a total of 4 factorial divided by 2 factorial divided by 2 factorial ways to go from h to x, and that means from h to x to w is the product of both ways. So the total number of ways to go from h to w is equal to this. And you can use your calculator to calculate this. Thank you for watching.